not sure that they would recognize the reflections I'm about to make, which come from something of an outsider, but one who works very closely with the Jewish community on behalf of the Bishops' Conference, and also in Rome with different dicasteries on interreligious dialogue. What I want to propose is that two things have happened this year whose importance, as we unpack it, will show us something very unique that's gone on in Catholic-Jewish relations and is kind of waiting to be explained. The first is the uh, controversy <coughs> over the Good Friday prayer for the Jews, which is found in what we call the Rites of 62. As you may know, the Holy Father, a year ago, broadened a certain permission in a Latin document called Summorum Pontificum. He broadened the permission given by, and this is quite interesting, John Paul II in 1988, to allow the old rites of the Mass and the sacraments that were uh, in effect before the reform of the Second Vatican Council, some of us with gray hair, gray hair here remember those rites. He allowed those rites to be more broadly celebrated in the Catholic Church universally. And he gave most of the authority to go back and celebrate those rites to the parish priest, not to the bishop. So the Pope skipped over Episcopal authority and handed to the local priest the right to go back and celebrate the way the liturgy was, we can call it the old liturgy, from 62. Well, there are difficulties with that pastorally and otherwise, but the point at hand is this. On Good Friday, there were traditionally about 10 important <coughs> prayers offered for all kinds of categories of people. The church throughout the world, catechumens, those about to be baptized, for the pope, for bishops, for priests, for lay people, for those in other Christian communions, for those who don't believe in God, and one for the Jews. But the text of the prayer in 1962 was a text which the Jewish community had long taken exception to because it was a text that talked about basically Jews in negative language. If I might, uh, I'll read one translation of this. Uh, this would be the prayer for the Jews on Good Friday as it was in 1962. Let us also pray for the Jews that um, <laughs> Almighty God may remove the veil from their hearts so that they too may acknowledge Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray, let us kneel, arise, Almighty and eternal God, who do not exclude from your mercy even the faithless Jews. Hear our prayer, which we offer for the blindness of those people that acknowledging the light of your truth, which is Christ, they may be delivered from their darkness through Christ our Lord. Well, you may know the very famous story of John the 23rd on his first Good Friday as Pope, which would be 1958, I think. Huh? 59. 59, thank He's you. in October 58. October. So spring of 59. was in the sacristy in St. Peter's before the Good Friday liturgy started. <clears throat> and he motioned to the missile bearer, the, uh, the one with the great book for, for liturgy, to come over to him and he asked for a pen, which I'm sure sucked all the oxygen out of the room <laughs> because it suggested the Pope was about to mark one of these medieval missiles with a common pen. And he opened up to this very prayer. <laughs> and the word he struck out of the prayer, which was not in the 62 one, so this is 59, it wasn't just for the Jews in Latin, it was pro Judeis perfidiis, okay? Variously translated, wicked Jews, cunning Jews, faithless Jews. And John the 23rd himself, just having saved during World War II, we're coming up on the 65th anniversary of it, his 24,000 Jewish kids in Romania, Turkey, and Bulgaria from Nazi extermination by forging baptismal certificates. 
John takes the pen in the sacristy and he goes up to the word perfidis and he crosses it out and he looks at all the stunned Monsignori and he says in Italian, basta, enough, enough. <laughs>